Well, good morning. Welcome uh, to the campus update and uh, lovely snowy weather in Ohio in March. We've got a lot, a lot of things going on this time of year as we're approaching commencement and wrapping up the graduating classes activities. There's always a lot to share. So there are a lot of slides to share with you today. Most of these are informational. We had a great board of trustees meeting uh, just about a week ago. Uh, the board was incredible as always. Not a lot of or any concern actually on the part of the board. They feel the university is on a great trajectory. They're very supportive of everything that we are doing. And we are very thankful to have such a great board. Uh, this was the very first board meeting for our newest board member, um, Mrs. McQueen. Uh, Mrs. McQueen is an attorney in human, human resources, uh, employment law, um, practicing out of the Akron Canton region. And she's a great addition for us, bringing a lot of expertise to the table. So we're excited to have her on board with us also. Starting off as always, I want to be able to recognize some of the new research and phil non philanthropic and non-philanthropic grants that come into the university support our faculty member. Uh, this, since our last meeting, Dr. Julie Altman, Ms. Jessica Zavala, Dr. Huff, Dr. Berenger, and Dr. Lee. I do want to especially note the work that Dr. Altman did to attain the Super Rapids grant for the university. This will give us just short of $600,000 to be able to step up increased medical simulation equipment for the training of our students in all of our colleges. I'd also like to recognize some milestones for three of our employees at the university, Jacob Smith, Kelly Schrock, and Jonathan Wagner, who have now been with us as of February 5, 10, and 15 years. Thank you for your service to us and your loyalty. We're thrilled to have you as part of our wonderful organization. Match Day took place. Now, Match Day isn't a single day. In the College of Medicine, it's a process that takes place over about a four to five day period. And in the College of Pharmacy, it's actually a much more extended period of time. Part of the way we measure our success in our graduating classes who are going into the healthcare professions as clinicians is an understanding of how well they match because those students go out and look for positions in health systems who are a reflection of our training and a reflection of the quality and the caliber of the students that we have at the university. The College of Medicine had a wonderful match again this year. The average for matches at universities tends to be around 96%, depending on the year. Uh, we've traditionally been higher, and this year will be just short of about 99%. In fact, one student decided to go off and do a research year rather than participate in the match. If you remove that individual, we're just slightly over 99% with one student who is still looking for placement but the College of Medicine team is working with him and it feels very confident that we'll find something for him also. College of Pharmacy is still going through their match process. They're at an average between their first and second years at about 85%. The national average is about 74%. So we're doing well above the national average. And this process will go on for about another month. So we expect those numbers to go up pretty significantly. And this is just a great reflection of the quality of our students and, of course, the education they're receiving from this great team of people here. The College of Medicine match resulted in about 49% of our graduates going into some field in primary care, which is one of the metrics that were looked at from the state of Ohio. And of course, it's a specific metric and a specific rating area for U.S. News and World Report. So we're really thrilled that a lot of our students are going into that community-based area where they're going to be taking care of patients on the front line. While specialty care is critically important, primary care is significantly underserved. And the fact that our students going are going into it is really means we're, we're meeting our mission. Uh, and our mission is especially here to serve us the folks in Ohio and our communities. So with that, well over half of our students, once again, matched into Ohio as always takes place. I do wanna congratulate our students who received 
the award of UH Neomed Student Scholar. Last time we had a presentation, I announced the faculty scholars, but our student scholars are PhD students. Some of them are MD, PhD. Some have already completed a PharmD and are doing their PhD, and some are doing traditional PhD work. University Hospitals is providing additional financial resources, as well as additional training resources, working with clinicians and researchers at university hospitals. And these students will receive an additional $5,000 in their stipend this coming year on behalf of university hospitals. And that's Noah Aguirre, Leila Almsari, Trey Hillier, Trinity Clunk, Gabrielle Robinson, and Mil Miljan Terzik. So congratulations to them. They were participating in the award ceremony with our faculty just about two weeks ago. And we're excited to see where they do and the great work that they produce. The Board of Trustees authorized three new distinguished university professors. For those of you who don't know, distinguished university professor is a title that according to our policies is the highest honor that can be bestowed upon one of our faculty members by the university. We've had one active member who carries that title and that is Dr. Hans Tewison, who's always in the same seat so I know exactly where to look. Um, this year we we decided to add a few more because I think it's been an underutilized recognition. We have several thousand clinical faculty members and we've never given out recognition as a distinguished university to a clinical faculty member. And we have great faculty members on this campus, a much smaller population than the large clinical group. So we did three this year, or at least we nominated three and the Board of Trustees approved all three of those. Dr. Michael Forbes, who many of you know, is the Chief Academic Officer at Akron Children's Hospital. Dr. Forbes also served as our Interim Chairman for Pediatrics. He is a pediatric intensivist, a well-recognized researcher and academic leader, and an important part of the Neomed community. Dr. Joe Zarconi, who's been with this university since its very beginning, graduating in our first class, really a champion for the humanities and medicine that helped define who this university is and attracted talented students to come train in that specific area. And Dr. Zarconi has announced that he's planning to retire in October. With this as our 50 year, we thought it especially critical that we are able to recognize him with distinguished university professor and of course, Dr. Yang Chao Zhang, who is well known to all of us here, an incredible researcher, certainly among the top 1% in the world, one of the most NIH funded faculty member we have at the university, and just a critical research asset who's making tremendous strides in improving our understanding of the research in the area of lipid metabolism and liver disease. As a reminder, as we do every time, it's such an important effort for us that the Council on Dental Accreditation will be visiting with us next month on April 4th and 5th. This, we hope, is the final accreditation visit, having passed the bar with the Ohio Department of Higher Education, with the Higher Learning Commission, and now the Council on Dental Accreditation. We feel well prepared. We've got an incredible team who's led this work. So please, if you've been involved, if you're going to be involved, pay attention to the training sessions that are taking place. I think we're gonna hit this one out of the ballpark as we did with our big HLC review and as we did with the dental HLC visit. We've got an outstanding team. We have a great university and great facilities. And I have no doubt that we're going to come out of this with flying colors and be able to start recruiting our very first class of dental students 
who would begin in August of 2025, providing this accreditation visit goes as we expect it to. Dr. Chachai Watanakunakorn is a fixture in this institution. In fact, we are here today in the Watanakunakorn Lecture Hall. Dr. Watanakunakorn was an infectious disease expert who was at the very, very beginnings of the existence of this university 50 years ago. He's still listed amongst the top 2% of impactful research scholars in the world today. This man died decades ago, and yet he is still recognized as a preeminent researcher because of the great impact that his work has had. His widow, um, Eleanor Watanakunicorn, and his son Paul have remained steadfast supporters of this university. And in honor of Dr. Watana Kunikorn, we have our annual lectureship. I encourage you all to attend on April 3rd when Dr. Keith Armitage from University Hospitals, who's currently, uh, he's an infectious disease physician. He specializes in travel healthcare, and he is the residency director for internal medicine, will come and give a talk for the Watana Kunikorn lecture. I hope you're able to join us, and I'm sure this will be a captivating presentation. Our vitals program is nearing the end of this academic year, and April will be in person right here in Watana Kunicorn, and we'll hear from one of our own, Dr. Sarah Whittingham, who is an adjunct professor in surgery, and she will share with us the power of service and advocacy and how a physician with a disease can start to change the way diseases are treated and how patients see those diseases and gain access. So I hope you'll join us right here uh, in early April, uh, April 4th at noon. There will be food. I hope you come in to join us. And there's free CMAE for any of our clinicians who would like to get some. ID8 is a brand new program that was created with university hospitals. Its inaugural presentation was this time last year. We took talent from across the university and partnered them with talent from across university hospitals, threw them into interdisciplinary teams, and then presented them with a problem that we wanted to solve. Last year, that problem was around reducing infant mortality in Northeast Ohio. For those of you who don't know that because of health disparities, we have portions of Northeast Ohio where our infant mortality is at the same level as many areas in Africa. That's really unacceptable. So those teams came together, they brainstormed, they created new solutions, they were presented and we voted for several of them to move on. Of course, there was one clear winner at the time and university hospitals has continued to support them through the development of their project. We're going to do that again this year. It's two days. If you work for the university, you get those two days with pay. So we encourage all of you who are interested and encourage our students. The deadline is March 22nd, so coming up soon, to apply to participate in this program. It'll take place at the Bounce Innovation Hub in Akron. University Hospitals Ventures will be there with their team of leaders to help support the process, as will our team from the university. And of course, at the end, we'll give out the awards and the recognition. It was an amazing event last year, and we expect it to be even better this year. The Multicultural Festival will be um, April 10th in the Jay Gershon Atrium. Again, this is a chance to celebrate the cultures that are here at this university. It's our way of recognizing each other, being inclusive and supporting each other, whether you're a faculty member, a staff member, or one of our students. We want everybody to feel supported, to feel welcome. And the way you do that is to understand each other and where we're coming from. And culture is just critical to who we are as individuals. We're also going to have De-Stress Fest. It's happening in April because we're getting our students to be as relaxed and ready as possible for those big tests that are coming their way as we approach the end of the semester. This is a several day event run in the uh, student services. 
through Sam Emmerich's, Emmerich's team. So, sorry, I owe you a beverage. Dr. McPherson, Dr. Sandra McPherson's team. Uh, of course, that's under the office of the provost. So if you can participate, we hope that you do. Our students need your support. Uh, these, this is a difficult time for them and we want to be here to make sure that they feel like we are here and have their back. This is our annual Neovations bench to bedside time of year also. So on May 1st, just a few days before graduation, our teams of inventors and entrepreneurs working across different platforms, medicine, business, design, engineering, and law come together from across the region. And this year, there will be some from out of state coming to present the new inventions they've created to address significant healthcare needs. We'll give out over $20,000 in awards to the teams that have the best rated ideas to help them move those forward, to hopefully create solutions that will be commercialized through entrepreneurship and then be available for us to improve healthcare for our patients by either improving outcomes, reducing costs, or improving access to care. This is a great program. We're expecting about 25 teams this year as this program continues to grow. And we do know that a university from out of state is excited about this and will be traveling across the country with two teams to come participate alongside us. Thank you to Dr. Safadi and the entire team of student leaders and the support staff at the university who keep this program grow growing. And of course, commencement is May 4th this year. Uh, we will be at the University of Akron, as we always are, and expect a full house. But there will be a whole series of events that occur on this campus as we prepare for the graduation of our current senior students before they go off to fulfill their role in residencies or in practice, depending on their fields. This is an exciting time. I hope all of you can participate. For our faculty, I highly encourage that you sign up, dress in regalia, supporting what it is that we do and who we are as a university for our students. Our Board of Trustees have approved the formal honorary degree titles for two members of our community, Dr. Paul Bishop and Mr. Jack Timken. I think all of you know who the Timkins are. The Timkins have been incredible philanthropists and economic developers in the Canton region. Mr. Timken and his family have also supported the university over the years as has the Timken Foundation. This is an opportunity to honor and recognize him with an honorary doctorate degree. Mr. Bishop has also been a highly productive philanthropist supporting the community. He was a member of the university's board of trustees and fairly recently served as the chairman of Neomed's board of trustees. He currently continues to serve as an emeritus trustee member and he has been very generous in giving to the university. Uh, so we're excited to be able to honor both of these two individuals at our upcoming graduation. April 8th is the full eclipse. Um, for those of you who follow such things, I'm sure it's something you're very interested in seeing. For those of you who don't, you should be aware that there is expectations for substantial traffic jams across all of Northeast Ohio that may make your commute difficult. Uh, in an effort to reduce that traffic load and to make your lives a bit easier, we are not shutting down the campus, but we are encouraging those of you who are approved to do work from home or work from another location to choose that as one of your days. Uh, the intent is that most all education will be virtual and be delivered by an online platform. We're doing all we can to be able to reduce the local footprint so that we're not contributing to the traffic jams that are taking place across the region. The library several days beforehand will be hosting their total eclipse of the library event where they will give you free glasses that you can use to look at the eclipse. 
I understand they're going to be providing snacks and it's an opportunity to meet with the librarians and learn more about what they do. So if you are interested, I encourage you to take advantage of that opportunity. And then finally, many of you are aware there were tornadoes touching, touching down across Ohio, which is um, interesting timing. Mary Taylor and her team have been preparing us for a catastrophic event. It's part of what we need to do at a university to be ready. The most likely thing that could affect this university is a tornado. So we will be having a tornado drill this week. It is voluntary to participate, but we encourage you to do so. Um, it's really to practice and to train to understand what you need to do if a tornado is coming, where those areas are where you can protect yourself, and of course, going through the process of duck, which is to go down, get under something to cover, and then of course, um, keep in the shelter until it's been cleared. Uh, but we will be running that program, and regardless of who you are and where you work, if the uh, alert comes over, you are certainly encouraged to participate and not worry about what your work duties are at the time. We should be running this as though it is a real event so that we are ready and practiced should a tornado take place here on this campus. And I'm going the wrong way. And that is all I have today. And I hope there are some questions either on virtual land or within the audience that I can answer for you. Anything online? Nothing. Wow, that's great. Well, in that case, enjoy the rest of the time we had designated. Spend some time speaking with each other and enjoying each other's company. Get something uh, warm to drink. But uh, thank you for attending today.